Good morning, lovelies. Today we are breaking down my top 10 absolute least favorite villain tropes. These will make me hate the villain for all the wrong reasons. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos on science fiction, fantasy, and horror through a feminist lens. If you want sneak peeks at these videos, access to my Discord fan server, and other bonus content, join the Patreon community. The link is in the description. So number one, they are dumb or incompetent. The supposedly all-powerful Dark Lord can't even capture a handful of rogue teenagers. And I'm supposed to believe he's a threat to the entire world? They burn down the Chosen One's village, but let the Chosen One go free, just cuz. They want to enslave the world and destroy it. Flawless plan. Idiot villains aren't scary. In fact, if the villain is that much of an idiot, then it makes me question the intelligence of the good guys who are having such a hard time with him. Make your villain scary and formidable by giving them some wins. Otherwise, there's no point. Number two, they kill their own henchmen. I get that writers have their villains do this to show the audience that this guy's so bad, he kills his own people. He's an idiot is what he is. Unless those henchmen are genuinely getting in his way or usurping him, they're valuable assets that the villain, if they're smart, is going to do everything in their power to keep on their side. Sometimes that's fear, the way you kind of fear your boss might fire you if you screw up but that's not the only reason you stay in that job. Money and healthcare benefits are a good one. Maybe the minions have the same goals as the villain. They want the same things. Or sometimes it's just plain old loyalty. No villain with a brain is going to purposefully destroy that type of minion. Number three, bad sympathy. Sympathetic villains are all the rage these days, and sometimes they're written very well. Other times, the justification we're given as to why we should feel bad for this villain absolutely sucks. You can't blame this man for wanting to commit genocide. His mom just died. Bitch, everyone's mom dies. Okay, but you can't blame him for being a murderer. He grew up in poverty. Lots of people grow up in poverty, and they are scientifically proven to be more empathetic and compassionate. A tragic backstory isn't enough. We need more. Number four, when all of the villains are people of color and the heroes are all white. It's the second part that's the problem. You can absolutely have your villain be a person of color, but if you want to dodge the racist bullet, you gotta make some of your heroes people of color too. Otherwise, if your entire cast is white, except for that one guy that they're trying to kill because they're evil, you are literally vilifying people of color, which has already been done for centuries. It's racist. End of story. Number five, when the villain is the only woman in the story who doesn't want to get married or have children. Basically, all the good girls in the story are married and moms and or want to be married moms, and the villain is the only woman who actively rejects that because she's got other stuff going on. Basically, the classic female Disney villain. You're basically vilifying women who want things other than a family and home life. Your sexism is showing. Number six, when the villain is gay or gay coded and the heroes are all straight. Same basic principle as the racism thing except with homophobia. Number seven, they are disabled or insane and all the heroes are able-bodied and neurotypical. Ableism! This is exactly why I did not go see that movie Glass. One villain is in a wheelchair, the other villain has multiple personality disorder, their disabilities are the reason of their villainy, and they're going against the hero who has the perfect body and mind. I mentioned in my worst horror movie tropes video that I worked as a PCA for over two years helping people with mental disabilities live independent lives. So it really pisses me off to see this trope, which actively harms the disabled community by reinforcing the belief that someone, anyone, with a mental illness will eventually stab you because they're insane. Statistically speaking, people with mental illness are exponentially more likely to be the victims of a violent crime rather than the perpetuators of it. Mostly because neurotypical people have such a low opinion of them and see them as objects to exploit rather than actual people. Vilifying them in stories does not help. Number eight. This is not eight. Number, <laughs> number eight, the monologuist. The villain has the hero locked in a cage or pinned down a gunpoint. Now is the perfect opportunity to explain their master plan. Just shut up and kill them already. Number nine, when the villain is shipped with the heroine. This is more of a 
fandom reaction to the villain than what usually goes on in story, but it still annoys me. The villain is the bad guy. The hero is a girl. They belong together. Never mind that he murdered her father and that she's dating someone else. He's hot. Are the aloes okay? You can talk to me. Actually, no, you probably shouldn't. Take this to a professional. I very rarely see the opposite, where the male hero is shipped with a female villain, which tells me that this trope exists to perpetuate the belief that women should enter romantic relationships with douchebags to fix them. That's not how relationships work, or romance, or even therapy. And number 10, love redeems the villain. Being in love does not make you a better person. It can act as the catalyst for the villain actively choosing to try to be a better person, like what happened in The Good Place, which forced the villain to join the heroic friend group, an enemy of my enemy kind of situation, and he eventually joined the group for realsies and became a good guy. Platonic friend love, I love it. But most of the times I see this, it's basically, oh, this villain just needs to get laid, and then they'll join Team Good Guy. And about. Tell me your least favorite villain tropes in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and be sure to check out my Patreon page and join the community. Bye lovelies!